Are you ready to have a blast? My name is uh, Michael J. Hearn, and I am the co-writer and co-director of Death Drop Gorgeous. Uh, so congratulations on the movie's release, which is tomorrow. How do you feel about that? I'm trying not to use the words like surreal and magical because it's like real mm -hmm. life and it's happening. And I think mm -hmm. they're um, kind of redundant words, but I don't know how else to describe it. Um, why, are you, why are you so anti-magic? <laughs> definitely not anti-magic. Okay. Um, I believe there's a little magic in the world, but um, <laughs> no, it's crazy. Um, this started as, as such a small little fun project I was doing with two friends and now yeah you can go to iTunes and find it. In case anyone forgot we are talking about Death Drop Gorgeous today which we have a creator with us right now. How did this project start? Like what was the origin story? Originally started with my two co-creators Brandon and Chris and they were just sort of chatting about these dating apps that um, gay men use and dating I put in quotations. Mm -hmm. um, and how, and this was like six or seven years ago at this point, but how it's just kind of like an easy tool for like a possible serial killer. Oh, yeah. And um, they were just sort of like riffing off that and like brainstorming. And I met Brandon and we just like kept in touch and we always uh, bonded over horror movies. That was kind of like the core of like how our friendship built from. And one day, like one of us just said like, we should just make our own. And then he was like, well, I have a funny idea with a friend of mine that we came up with. and. Um, uh, we all met downtown one evening and we just started brainstorming and going from there. We could be next. <gasps> Any more questions, detective? Could you yeah. do me a favor and just, uh, in your own words, tell our audience what Death uh, Drop Gorgeous is all about? Sure, yeah. So Death Drop Gorgeous is a, it's like John Waters meets a Jalo meets a Video Nasty mm -hmm. uh, meets a, a B-movie 80s slasher. And it's sort of this over-the-top, campy, ladder punk uh, fest of a movie. Help! <laughs> I can back that up. Okay, I'm so happy to hear that you're a horror person because I wasn't yeah. necessarily positive like that you were going to be one. So now that it I know that. that you are, um, I'm wondering what was the movie that like fucked you up the most as a kid? Because I find that's a through line with horror people. I love that question. For me personally, it was the Blair Witch Project. I grew up in Massachusetts and I grew up surrounded by woods, not like super in the sticks, but we were, we played manhunt and we were uh, tr uh, tree climbing kids. And mm. I saw that movie and I wouldn't go like in the woods for like, like months afterwards. Um, oh no. Yeah, it really, it really stuck with me. It's still, I still think it's a great film um, to this day. It's such, oh, such yeah. smart marketing, some really uh, uneasy imagery. And I, what I love about it, I think what struck with me besides like being scared of the woods afterwards was the <laughs> ambiguity of the end, which I think like, yeah, at the time I was young enough where that was like relatively novel for me, but the films I were watching were probably had more of like a bow tie end. Well, how old were you at the time? Because when I saw it, I was too young to really even be scared by it. It took me until I was a little older and mature to realize how scary that movie oh, was. God. I wonder, I don't know. I remember a bunch of kids and I in the neighborhood all watched it together. I must have been like in middle school or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I that's the time, that's the time. My coworker at Dread Central, her name's Mary Beth. She has a podcast called Scarred for Life where she talks to horror professionals and that's like the the basis of the question. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I really recommend it. It's a great podcast. Oh, I'll have um, to check that out. For sure. Okay, so I did notice that there was a, a, a fake version of Grinder in the film called Pounder which is hilarious. I was wondering if you were comfortable enough to, if you had any horror grinder IRL stories that you could share. If not, oh I understand God. because it's very personal. I have one that's like pretty PG. So one time I had someone come over and before anything had started, he just fell asleep. It was oh no. really weird. And it almost like a, a narcolepsy kind of uh, way. No, yeah, I wasn't even doing anything. Like it wasn't yeah. in the it, was like, it wasn't in the middle of the action. Or mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I and then I tried to wake him up, and he like wouldn't wake up. Oh, no. It was it was so bizarre. And my roommate was over, and I texted her, and I was like, he just fell asleep, and he's not waking up. And then so she came over to my bedroom and was like poking him. It was <laughs> that's, it was the, that's a good friend. Yeah, she she's a great friend. I love. It's her. just little um, kids in the woods poking a body, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was so strange. I don't know if it was like a, 
he wanted me to do things to him while he was sleeping like some sort of oh, weird, weird fetish weird fetish thing i don't know i mean, I mean i'm pro, sure. pro fetish but yeah yeah no 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 absolutely of course, of course, of course. as long as it's consensual um yeah. but eventually he woke up and i was like hey i think maybe you should go and he was like did i offend you and i was like no i'm just kind of weirded out um, <laughs> no i'm scared <laughs> yeah exactly i didn't it was very very strange yeah that's a good one you know because it's hard to get the pg ones for the books but that one that one i like yeah yeah So you told me that you're a horror person. Uh, yeah. Do you do you have like major horror inspirations? Not necessarily for this film, but like as a creative in general. I mean, I can't think of like major specific horror mm -hmm. inspirations. Uh, if you, there's like a Pan's Labyrinth behind like me, which is one of my yeah, yeah, one of my favorite films, which I know is like I mean, it's kind of horrific. It's like more of like a you know a fable fantasy, but there's some horrific elements there. I love. Edgar Allan Poe and being from Providence also love H.P. Lovecraft stories despite him being like an awful human. Yep. I remember some of the first like besides the Blair Witch Project like horrific imagery I also saw in like the Lord of the Rings movies which I know sounds <laughs> silly but mm -hmm. there were some scary images there for like an 11 12 year old. So I think maybe a lot of like horror fantasy I, I get inspired by even though there's not even like a drop of that in Death Drop Gorgeous but then like classic writers like Edgar Allan Poe H.P. Lovecraft I also one of my favorite short story writers is Flannery O'Connor who does mm -hmm. a lot of like southern gothic stuff which I think is like yes sort of horror it's like a little disturbing it's not like your traditional horror but it's still like a little unsettling do you think we can get Guillermo del Toro for the sequel just to produce I, I would like that. I mean, okay. that would be nice. Is he still doing P Pinocchio, do you know? This is an amazing question. Okay, I'm, <laughs> you're not asking this, but I have a podcast called Development Hell where I unpack horror movies that never happened. Oh and my I, I want to do Pinocchio, but but I think it is happening. So I believe okay. Netflix is doing it, but it's, it's a little hush-hush. Okay. But he has yeah. so many movies in Development Hell. It's, it's quite sad, but it's good yeah, for me. It's it's so bizarre to me because like it's also uh, I mean I know that he was going to do The Hobbit before there was like creative differences oh, yeah. From what I, yeah but can you imagine what like his middle earth would have looked like I just... I'm like uh, and in, in an alternate universe we have it but not in this one <laughs> you were saying you're you know you like the works of Lovecraft I believe he was on the at the mountains of madness for a while too yeah yeah succumbed. So I'm glad that I got to bring that up. What's um, the name of your um, your Development Hell podcast? Oh my God, thank you for bringing it back. Yes, it's called Development Hell. And it's actually okay. right here on the Dread Podcast Network for anyone who may be wondering. Oh, awesome. I'll have to check that out. I'm a big fan of the glory hole meat grinder moment in the film. Do you have a favorite kill in Death Rob Gorgeous? I mean, I think that one is like gonna be the one that folks remember the most and the one yes. like to like easily summarize it'll be like oh the meat grinder movie right so i do think that one's probably my favorite without like giving too many spoilers away sort of the the finale in the basement with the christmas lights was a very long day um but also <laughs> that, that one's hilarious and over the top and it's everything death drop is it's like our special effects we didn't go for realism we went for like absurdity and that mm -hmm. one very long day but i i really enjoy that scene a lot yeah the whole thing this is such an easy comparison but it definitely has like a gay version of the original evil dead that i'm obsessed with yeah for sure so what was your festival run like i saw you made a couple of really exciting stops um anything yeah. worth, worth noting so the our festival run was was strange because uh, it was hampered by COVID. So we submitted to festivals before really knowing how 2020 was gonna pan out. And every festival we were accepted in uh, went virtual. There was positives and negatives to that. Positives being a lot more eyes got to see our film because they could just like buy a ticket and watch it from home. The negative being like, we didn't really have much of a, like, a festival experience as a team, which we were really excited for. But yeah, so um, some fests that were really good to us were uh, Wicked Queer, which is Boston's LGBTQ film festival. Festival. Sean Cotter, who is the program director of that, was really supportive of our film. And that's where we premiered. And then Salem Horror Fest, uh, we won the audience award at. Uh, Kay, mm -hmm. who runs Salem Horror Fest, has been such a huge support. She's so great. Don't and those, yeah, those two were, were, were standouts for me. 
Yeah, I was going to say next. I am a huge fan of Salem Horror. I've been, I've had a short there. But you guys didn't get a chance to go, right? Because it was just digital? Yeah, so I'm hoping for our next feature, we'll get to go. Um, we've hung out with Kay. She's she's so great. The Brandon, my co-creator, and his his boyfriend, Ryan, have gone to Salem Horror Fest, but not like, like the mm-hmm. ones before we submitted to, and they had a great time. That's actually how... They met Linnea Quigley, and that's how we got Linnea Quigley in our movie. <laughs> well, I mean, I was saving it till the end, but I was, I have to ask what that was like, what yeah. kind of experience that was. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. Um, uh-huh. So one of the the guys that did the score, Devin Hunt, was friends with her. She like was in one of his music videos at one point. Uh, Brandon and Ryan met up with Devin, who, and then were introduced to Linnea, and they were like out to dinner and they, we had like this one little Uber driver bit part and we were, and they were gonna, they like were building themselves up to ask her. And at dinner they asked and she was like, yeah. And then after dinner, they just went in the car and did the did the scene. That's incredible. That's why indie horror is, is everything. <laughs> Going back to the COVID stuff, we've lost so many gay venues, which is such a nightmare. But uh, yeah. I was wondering if you had any gay venues in Provincetown that maybe people aren't aware of that we should know about the next time we get to go there. Providence, Rhode Island is a super gay city. Oh, right. Uh, Sorry. No, don't. Seriously, <laughs> common. No, no, such a common mistake. My scruff profile Because it's a gay says, city, right? Right. Yeah. They're both gay cities. Uh, and they sound almost exactly alike. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, Providence is, is none of the, um, thankfully, none of the um, gay spots here closed during COVID. They somehow managed. But what's cool about Providence is it's a pretty walkable city. So they're all within walking distance. Um, Mm -hmm. It's like a fruit loop of like of bars and clubs like Wayne, uh, who plays Dwayne in the movie bartends actually at this one called The Stable, which is a pretty popular spot. Um, I actually bartend here and there at the Providence Eagle. So we're all sort of like work in our communities. um, I love that. That's how you you know it inside out. So I'm assuming the outhouse fictional so the, the name is fictional that space is actually a gay bar uh, gay club called the dark lady so they were very generous in letting us go in whenever we kind of needed if they weren't open uh in, in doing our scenes so yeah the dark lady is the one that's featured most prominently uh in the movie cool what was like the biggest challenge filming this What was difficult is that it did take like a year and a half to film. And that was due to, I mean, our budget was entirely crowdsourced. So we were obviously limited in that front. Uh, We all have full-time jobs. Some of us have full-time and part-time jobs. So it was like nights and weekends and sort of like brainstorming how we were going to execute certain scenes with the resources we had. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the biggest challenge is just sort of that like multitasking and our crew is like a five person crew and then usually one or two of those five were one of the actors so it was just kind of like this rotation of um just wearing many different hats and that sometimes um yeah. you got like 40 percent through the film and you're like you felt like you were close and you're like oh wait no we have like so many more scenes to do that's that feels like the john waters model i wonder if uh he's do you, do you know if he's seen it? I don't think he has. I know we've had friends who say they know him or something. I I do hope he watches mm. it. Um, I would love, I would love for him to see it. We've we've joked about just like um, finding his house in Provincetown, um, and just like dropping off a DVD and like running away. <laughs> Bye. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I we have it. not done that. I yeah. think that's a really good plan, and I support it. And if I can help, please uh, yeah. let me let me know. Any other like icons of the community? Have you got any good feedback from anyone exciting? Actually, so Peaches Christ saw it, and she she's been super sweet and supportive, um, and she enjoyed it. I know she just started a part podcast with Michael Verratti, who's yep. also like such a great great person, um, and also has been super supportive. But two uh, two guys that helped us a lot along the way, uh, Roman uh, Cimenti and Tyler Jensen, who just did that Scream Queen uh, Nightmare on Elm Street podcast about how like gay that movie was, that documentary. So they, they oh made- yeah, I did I did see that documentary. Did they do a podcast sort of to accompany it? Yeah, they're doing a podcast oh. right now. Um, but they so they did that documentary and they they like helped us edit. They uh, Roman did a lot of like the sound design. Tyler cut our trailer. Like they've just been great uh, mentors to us. When they got wind of the movie, it was really it felt empowered to finish it. But it felt very validating to have like these two gay guys like 
who are making a really great documentary like be excited for us. Yeah, it's validating. You know, the whole I, mean, I feel like the whole gay horror world is a buzz right now. So that's got to yeah. be exciting for you. Why even bother asking? She's so much prettier than me. It's not fair. <laughs> Bitch. So yeah, it's coming out tomorrow. I want to ask what's next, but like what what do you want to be next? Like what's your blue sky right now for this project? Every step along the way that we've gotten has been like the blue sky. Like the mm -hmm. fact that we got distribution is kind of wild to me. Not that I don't believe in the project. I, I believe in it and I'm very like proud of it, but it's just so like DIY and niche that I guess we didn't really know uh -huh. how far it was going to go. Wow. And so like this is pretty far. I don't even know what, what would be next. I know there'll be physical media, which will be exciting. Our distributor is working on that. And I just want, yeah, I want people to see. I want people to have fun. Um, I want to throw a couple screeners and parties because I do think Death Drop Gorgeous needs to be seen. Like mm -hmm. you're supposed to see it with a crowd. Like you're all supposed to be screaming and laughing and like shielding your eyes together. So yeah. I'm hoping to throw like some like weird parties with it, like mixed in with like, I don't know, drag queen intermission or something oh like, my god yeah. this, this is heaven on earth i cannot <laughs> yeah. wait to participate in yeah. toronto because that needs to be a stop on your on your path because that's where i am i would love that i haven't been to toronto in a very long time oh it's um, so fun yeah it was beautiful yeah. it was a beautiful city oh we appreciate that okay i mean obviously this is where i'm heading is sequel like where yeah. is the sequel is this even on the table what do i know so right now it's not we have we've um just as like a, a team have like discussed what this a sequel could look like is it more of a prequel <laughs> Et cetera, et cetera. Um, we haven't started writing it. We've just been throwing around ideas because we're we're working on another project right now that we're hopefully going to wrap production with this spring called Saint Drogo, which is also horror, but it will be like tonally very different. I mean, we are down for a prequel or a sequel. We just want to like stand behind the idea as mm -hmm. well and believe in it. Like we don't want to do it just to do it. You're not gonna. You're not. You're not cashing in. Not right. Yet. I mean, but then we also say like, yeah, if some rich producer came along and was like, I'll pay you to make a sequel, we could probably pull something out of our Oh, ass. yeah. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. You'd think there'd be more mainstream horror today. And there's not. Like, it's strange how Death Drop Gorgeous is almost as close as we're getting right now. I was wondering yeah. if you've seen any other, like, not coded gay, but like forward gay horror, like Hellbent. Is there any... Is there any titles that you can throw my way as inspo? Most recently, off the top of my head, I fell in love with Knife and Heart. That was like so beautiful, so jollo, overtly queer, and just like a great, great horror movie. That one, that one I saw as I think while we were in post. So it didn't necessarily inspire Death Drop, but it made me excited for for queer horror. Oh God, I could pull up my letterbox and probably find something else. But that definitely <laughs> That 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 definitely affected. No, me. no, then, that's um, a good answer. And then um, I just I just thought of another one, Stranger by the Lake. I really love. Oh, see that one? I don't know. You have to tell me. Oh, okay. It's um, I think it was French. It's on Criterion right now, I believe, and mm -hmm. it's just cruising, except at a lake and not as problematic. <laughs> I mean, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Is it's it horror? Weird. It's ho It's it's like a uh, slow burn horror it's not going to be like over the top gory and bloody but it is mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. sort of like a nice sexy slow burn so it's not death of Gorgeous 2 that's fine <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind that since you're a horror fan and a filmmaker if you got carte blanche to resurrect one of the classic franchises preferably you know 80s which one would you pick? Hmm. And I want to ask you for a pitch but I'm not going to do that to you right now mostly oh, I just you. want you to pick one and I can tell you mine too, if you need to think, but yeah, I can what, keep is, what is, what is yeah. yours? Yeah. So unfortunately Amazon is resurrecting. I know you did last summer with a TV series. So that's mm -hmm. putting a wrench in my plans, but my, my goal, uh, my whole life as to, was to do a fourth. I know what you did last summer movie. Do you know that yeah. there's a third? Have you ever heard of, I'll always know what you did last summer. No, I don't think so. Crappy direct to video. I want to make a direct sequel to that anyway. So that's, and I want Anne Hesh to be back. That's oh all. I, that's all I know. Yeah. I feel like that's enough. 
yeah, that's that's the perfect place to start. This sounds so bad as a, a horror person, I guess. I'm not a big franchise person. Like oh, She's an art house. She's Criterion. <laughs> she's Giallo. I get it now. I see who you are. No, I'm definitely not that. Fa- it's only probably recently that I've actually like <laughs> challenged my viewership. But I feel like if I, I would really like to, um, I know this isn't a franchise, but I would really like to do like a modern take on like an Edgar Allan Poe story. Like it was kind of cool. creepy. Yeah, it was kind of creepy, like rereading like Mask of the Red Death and mm-hmm. how similar it was to how like the elite treated the rest of this country during COVID. And I don't want to do a COVID movie because no one needs that. And that would be so exhausting. But uh, and not necessarily uh, Mask of the Red Death, but I think like mm-hmm. revisiting some of those like old horror trope. classics. I love that. Yeah. It's like the Jaws trope. It's like exactly what's happening now. Well, now that you say Jaws, sorry. Now I actually, that's a better answer. I <gasps> I have a very weird love-hate relationship with shark movies. I like love to go watch them, but I know they're going to always mostly be bad. They're terrible. And one of my goals as like, at least, I'm not even saying I need to like actually like be the director of the movie or whatever, but like one of my goals as a screenwriter is to write a really good shark movie. So I guess maybe re <laughs> bringing back Jaws. Sick. Yeah. Okay, I'm so glad you said that because I have a pitch for a Jaws sequel. Can I give it to you? Yes, yeah. So you know how in the first movie, it takes a long time before anyone sees the shark and Mm -hmm. we just assume there is one and that like the good guys are sort of knowing what's going on. My idea is to have a Jaws sequel where it's actually a serial killer the whole time and you don't know it till the end. Okay. And they like kill people like a shark would. Like a shark would. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I don't have it fully baked, but it's enough. No, it's again, no, I'm down for that. That would actually be, yeah. Because I was trying to think of like why so many shark movies failed, but Jaws didn't. Like why was Jaws successful? And I haven't really like. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Probably that. Mm. I watched one the other day and I'm not going to say which one it was because I don't want to be like. You have to. I have to. I'll bleep it. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. 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 I don't want to just be talking smack, especially. I don't know. But I was just like, man, like I was so excited for this and it's so bad. It's almost like going on like a bunch of dates and knowing the dates are going to be bad. You're just mm-hmm. always let down. But like the initial excitement is so like. Yeah, there's, there's hope. You're like, maybe, but no. Yeah. I hope yeah. you're not talking about The Shallows because I'm a fan. No, I liked The Shallows. How does Blake Lively continue to sell a whole film? But she does. Yeah. She, she because... carries movies. And I would never would have guessed that that would be possible. But she does. Yeah, you don't really, like, hear about her regularly. No, 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 no. I mean, that's what happens when you marry a Canadian. You're content. Right. Everything's fine. I know. Um, I need to yeah. get out of this country, so let me know if there's someone that... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, you, I support that for, for all of you people down there, especially right. the queers who just take you over as refugees. Yeah. Do you know of any drag queens that, specifically spooky drag queens if possible, that I might not know about and I should look into. I'm going to first say Complete Destruction, who is in our movie, who plays Tragedy. Complete Destruction is the um, her drag name. Oh my God, she's so talented. The the looks she turns out, I'm always excited to see what she did. And in COVID, so many drag queens had to move to like the digital drag sphere. Mm-hmm. And Complete just went like above and beyond, was making these really beautiful films and these weird sets. It was just so cool. Um, so I highly recommend everyone to check out Complete Destruction. You might already know this one, but uh, Victoria Elizabeth Black, who is in Dragula season two, uh, was a finalist, did our special effects. So cool. yeah, and she was great. She came up, she drove up from Florida with her partner and they're like in their like little van and they brought all their special effects materials and like stayed with oh, us for a week. I love queer people. That's the queerest thing I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah. That's cute. Really... I wrote an article recently about like the 10 scariest drag queens to watch and she made the list. So that's oh, okay. cool, right? Cool, yeah. Yeah, but um, the first one is such a great name. Can you see the first name again? Complete Destruction? Yeah, Complete Destruction. Hol- that's the name. Hell yes. And like no, no spin on the spelling, just like straightforward. Yeah. You got Straight- it. <laughs> Yeah, straightforward. Yeah, no weird I like love letter replacement. It. Yeah, I'm obsessed with drag queen names as everybody is. And I'm yeah. sorry, I don't want to put you on the spot. I keep putting you on the spot. Do you have a drag? Like, do you have a drag name that you could? Oh my or, God. Or, 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 or like I'm a number of drag it's names? Not, it probably won't be that funny um, to other folks. So the, the, DDG crew and I have this running joke that we're, we're, uh, we're going to go out as like this drag troupe called like the gutter girls 
<laughs> and we all, and we all have our own names like brandon's like drag name is just mall santa like <laughs> i, mean, I name, love that just yeah mall santa mine was going to be a play on jeb bush's jeb with the exclamation point but i was just going to be deb exclamation point but I like never it, have got it but i'm i'm laughing <laughs> it's it's not like because how my personality is like it would just be very underwhelming like jeb bush is wake so, up uh, jeb it's my yeah, favorite exactly. thing that, that that man ever said i quote it all the time it's i so know funny. yeah, yeah what, there's loose trash is another drag name <laughs> oh my god yeah they're so just like rude. stupid yeah loose trash mall santa um, mall santa's so funny it's very tumblr <laughs> and i celebrate that yeah yeah and i think one of them is like coco chanel uh-huh and then Jonestown Rivers. Oh my God, <laughs> Jonestown Rivers. I, I like yes. it. So those are I the like gutter it. girls, yeah. My, my horror one is very, very simple, but I think maybe elegant and you can, I'm going to ask you to rate it out of 10. Okay. Crystal Lake with a K, but obviously it's a reference to you know what. Yeah, duh. So I have to say 10. Like, that's great. Stop. 10, yeah. you're just, you're just you're just saying no. that but that's okay no no it's great really? i can't believe that's not already a drag name i also. haven't looked into it I don't, I <laughs> but feel like, i feel like i def- we would have heard right yeah like i feel like i don't know i feel like we would have heard that one okay well i that made my day maybe you should um, trademark it first real quick okay <laughs> okay <laughs> somebody get to work on this um, <laughs> um okay so my last question for you really is what's next for you you kind of said it already but i want to know again we are in the middle of production of our next feature called mm-hmm. saint drogo which is sort of like a nightmarish slow burn that's going to take place in provincetown this time the other p town would be um, a good drag name in itself i'm sorry uh, no no that it could it could so you'll recognize some familiar faces from death drop just out of drag this time cool. and um yeah, it's like kind of spooky and eerie and takes place on the Cape in the winter, which is like very bleak and, and ghost towny. So I mean, um, yeah, you are it, you're in Stephen King country kind of too, right? You're like in horror country generally. Yeah, yeah. New England is pretty much like, yeah, all around the horror country. So definitely, definitely got the, the vibes um, over here. So yeah, we're working on that. Um, we have a teaser trailer up if people want to check it out. Okay, incredible. Where can people find you on the internet if you want to be found? If you want to know more about Death Drop Gorgeous, if you just type in Death Drop Gorgeous to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter that we're mm-hmm. floating around there, the crew and I started a production company called Monster Makeup Productions, which is also, if you search that, you'll find it. It has like this really creepy little monster with lipstick on so if you want to keep up to date with like the projects we're working on because we do smaller things like locally like we'll make music videos for musicians and stuff like that too Mm -hmm. and then if you want to follow the progress for saint drogo same thing like saint drogo all across the board um and hopefully we'll have more updates with that um in the coming months okay well i can't wait to see that and maybe we'll talk again then this yeah, I would so love that. Fun. Thank you for agreeing to this. Oh, no, thank you for having me. This has been a pleasure. I always finish my number. <laughs>